Here's a tip if you have tight hamstrings like me and you find some poses really hard to access as a result. So it can make sitting difficult for some people and it can make folds difficult. So I'm gonna show you a few forward folds using a support. I like a folded blanket because you can also fold it more or less depending on how much height you need. Okay, so when I add a little bit of height to my hips, it keeps my pelvis from, from curling back, which is what it usually does, to coming forward again. So it's really just square on top of my blanket. So play with blankets or whatever you have so that you get that feeling that your pelvis is sitting on the blankets themselves and you're not sort of rolling back, okay? Very, very important. Now when I do forward folds, take my legs out in front, the other thing that I like to do, and again, this is for people who have tight hamstrings, when you do forward folds, and I'll show you a couple of different ones, you can actually hurt your back if you keep your legs straight and you're forcing yourself forward and you're trying to reach that pose, right? You're trying to reach your feet or your ankles. Forget all of that. Do not make that your goal. Again, we're making the pose come to us, right? So I'm gonna grab another blanket and show you what I, what I do. Again, I reiterate, this is a, a way to make your practice more safe, more comfortable, and hopefully more enjoyable. So I put a rolled up blanket underneath my knees. If you're doing this at home, use a towel. You can actually use two hand towels for the next pose that I'll show you. You can have, when your legs are opened wider, you can have a hand towel under each knee. So be creative. We don't need fancy things. I'm in my yoga studio. That's why I have these things now. But when I'm at home, I use whatever I have handy. So this is a forward fold. Now my hips are slightly elevated so that I can really feel that my pelvis is square on the blanket. My knees are slightly bent and I don't have to deal with it because I have something underneath them. So I don't have to think about keeping my knees bent. And then we sit up straight, by the way, feet are flexed, right? And then we inhale the arms up and then we fold forward, hinging at the hips. Now, if you don't reach your toes, it doesn't matter. If you fold forward and your hands come to here, this is your fold. Again, it's not about what it looks like, it's really all about what it feels like. So if you're feeling a nice stretch here, just stop, <laughs> stop and enjoy it. There's no reason to overthink it or make it anything more than it is. I personally like to rest my arms on my shins when I do this, and then I just slowly close my eyes, breathe deeply, and if my body starts to stretch a little and it lets me in a little more deeply, then I'll come in on the exhales, I'll probably come in a little more deeply. What we don't wanna do is kinda of come in and like round the back and everything, we wanna to try to keep the back straight for this pose, and some poses it's fine. And then to come out, we're just gonna come out, very gently walk our way back up. Now the other way that this can come in handy is when you're doing Janusha Shasana. So I'll put it under this leg because this is the leg that's out and this is the leg that comes in, okay? In Janu Shirshasana, okay? This is not a requirement, but this is a way to help you uh, get a little deeper into this pose, okay? And we hold the poses longer so that our body has time to melt into it and to adjust into that pose. So in Janu Shirshasana, what we do is we inhale up. I'm sure you've done this one before. You turn towards the extended leg. So there's a, a little bit of a twist and then a folding forward, okay? Now for me, I'll just adjust into it. I have been practicing this one for a while. I'm not, you know, perfect at it, but I'm not perfect at anything because there's no such thing. And I like to rest and land my forehead on my knees if I'm feeling a bit less flexible or tired or whatever. I'm gonna use a block and put it on my shin. Or at the beginning, when I started to do this, I used to do it like this, with my forehead on the block on top of my thigh. And as my flexibility increased, I was able to change the heights and then start to move it down my leg, okay? So eventually, things change and shift. So just find a way 
to get your forehead to rest on something. Again, it's not a requirement, but the reason why we do this, again, it helps to activate your parasympathetic nervous system so that your body benefits from the pose a little bit more. And then here we take full deep breaths. Again, I really like long holds, so 10 breaths in this pose is totally fine. Another thing you can do with your blanket is in a wide-legged fold. So I try to maybe get on the little edge of it, right? Now this is also helpful for people who have tight hamstrings. Again, I said I'm one of them, right? I'm, I'm improving, but you know, it takes years. So again, you can put something under the knees here. I'll skip it for now because I can show you, I'll show you how I can keep my knees slightly bent on my own, just keeping them loose and soft. I'm not trying to lock my knees, right? And then I wanna make sure I'm sitting up straight so that my pelvis is not rolling back. Like I said, it's really easy for that to happen. Now for a lot of people, this is really hard, okay? And a lot of people, they try to open their legs too wide. So bring the legs in a little bit closer, okay? You don't, you don't have to be a gymnast to do this. Bring your hands in front. Now, some people take it this way. They bring their hands in front, slowly start to fold forward, and like they end up laying down all the way on the mat, which is really amazing to me, and I hope I get there someday. <laughs> but what I find very helpful is to bring my hands behind me. This has helped me to make more progress in this pose, so it might help you. Can't guarantee, but you never know. So I press into the mat behind me, and then I press the upper body forward. This is how I enter this forward fold for me. And this is an option that you can try to see if it works for you. Don't let a yoga teacher tell you if you're doing this, no, no, bring your hands in front. That's not a teacher for you, okay? A teacher for you is the one that shows you different kinds of modifications and different kinds of options to help you get into the pose, and again, bring the pose to you. So try these tricks when you have the tight hamstrings, right? Keep the knees bent at all times. I'm gonna show you one more. Forward folds. Bend the knees, okay? We'll inhale up, forward fold. My knees are slightly bent. Now I'm coming into ragdoll. Let me show you ragdoll. I'm just hanging down, my knees are bent. You can bend the knees as much as you want in ragdoll. You can bend them a little, you can bend them a lot, but keep them bent. Let the upper body move nice and loose. Shake your head yes and no. This is a wonderful way to get length in the spine, to loosen things up, get a little space between the vertebrae. Breathe fully and deeply, shift the weight around your feet. Let the upper body float around like a piece of seaweed. You'll literally feel your spine getting longer in this pose. And by keeping the knees bent, we're not straining on the hamstring. So again, it makes the pose a much more enjoyable and much more accessible. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it was helpful to you. Thank you so much. Namaste.